we've talked about how to win a fight before, right? What, like, what is the general principle behind how to create the win of a fight? But in order to create those circumstances, you actually need some successful tactics. And this is kind of like how you would roll successful hits, right? If this was Dungeons and Dragons, this is how you make sure that you are rolling successes and hopefully some critical successes, maybe some natural 20s. That would be great. But one of the things we have to understand is like, what is going to score you a successful attack? Now, obviously, we can just say, hey, you just kind of blast through and overpower your opponent. That's only available to some of us in some circumstances. And that's mostly just going to be a size and athletics difference. Um, it, it absolutely is a factor. Competition does try to minimize that factor, but you may find that factor. You might still find that factor in competition. And more often than not, though, you will find it outside of competition much more frequently. Um, that can give you some false positives, though, so you have to be careful of that. So what we really want to, to come down to, um, there's a great quote from Jean LaBelle. I'll see if I can find it. If I can't, don't worry about it. But he, he said something to the effect of, you know, like, if you want to win a fight, you got you to gotta hit a guy where he hasn't trained or, or something like that, right? And so, like, your number one thing uh, is going to be using tactics and techniques that your opponent is completely ignorant of. Anything that you can surprise your opponent with uh, because they just, they don't understand that that's a thing. Man, you're going to have such a leg up, right? This is what we saw very early on in the UFC when people of much more distinctive styles were going up against each other. They were simply fighting in ways that they were completely unaccustomed to. And a lot of guys were getting caught with some really basic, simple stuff just because they hadn't trained those things. Now, because of the phenomenon of MMA and... You know, I mean, look, mixing martial arts actually is pretty old, but the fact is that modern MMA has kind of done for it uh, something that couldn't have been done otherwise. And so people are a lot less ignorant of things than they used to be, uh, at least in the trained atmosphere. Um, but still, everybody's got holes in their game. And if you can attack somebody with something that they just don't understand, that is great, right? So just keep a, keep in mind, right? Like the general principle that we're working with here is you cannot defend against a threat that you're not aware of. You have to be aware of a threat to successfully defend against it. Now, like you might have some natural defenses that just kind of kick in and you're gonna have a roll of the dice chance that you accidentally defend against it the problem is that that's not going to be a reliable thing, right? You Reliability generally requires training, uh, and that's what we're after here. So now, if this doesn't work, right, if you just have an opponent who is just really knowledgeable, really well-skilled, they're just not ignorant of enough things that you know, uh, then you got to move to the next thing, right, which is exploiting their mistakes. Because everybody is human, everybody makes mistakes. Uh, when people get tired or if people are stressed out, uh, or if they're injured, they will start making mistakes uh, e either either by uh, physiological fact, you know, their, their bodies will not cooperate. Um, or, you know, it could be even a psychological thing. Obviously, psychological faults are, are probably going to be more common in the early rounds where people are just a little too cocky um, or people are a little too timid. And being cocky and timid funny enough, yield a lot of the same mistakes. So uh, exploiting your opponent's mistakes is a big one, right? And it's probably the most common one um, because we kind of generally don't assume people are going to be ignorant uh, uh, of our techniques and tactics. Um, but we do assume that people are human and they're going to make some mistakes. And then, of course, failing them naturally making mistakes, uh, we try to make them make mistakes. And this is where things like throwing feints and, and, and throwing baits and stuff like that is really, really useful because we make them make a mistake by uh, causing them to change their plan. And by causing them to change their plan, preferably into something they are less comfortable with, uh, you create some opportunities for mistakes to reveal themselves and for you to exploit them. 
And then of course, there's my favorite one. This is the true magician level, right? If you really want to be like a solid battle mage, yeah, I know I'm mixing genres here. Now we're going Final Fantasy instead of uh, Dungeons and Dragons, whatever. But if you want to be like a solid battle mage, uh, you know, you just violate their expectation. You do something so far outside of what they expect. And again, this would be in the realm of like feints and baits, but this is just really like it's mastery of that. It, it's the making them make a mistake at an expert level. Um, this is like the same way that, that punchlines in, 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 in comedy works. The reason that something is funny is you do all this setup and then you take a left turn so hard that people just don't expect it. And the, like the shock value itself is hilarious. You know, like it's the same thing, right? And it's absolutely the same thing with stage magic, you know, or, 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 or close up magic dealing with, um, you, you are leading them along this journey, along the story. You're getting them invested in something and then boom, right? Something appears out of nowhere or disappears out of nowhere or something changes in a drastic way that they couldn't possibly expect unless they were in on the joke. And that, like that is the level that we all should be striving to get to, right? Because this level of being an absolute, you know, battle mage, magician, you know, warrior, you know, kind of thing, uh, covers all of this, right? So we want to make sure that whatever we're doing, right? Like, yes, you can just be a juggernaut battering ram, beat down the front door, you know, the boss rooting tactic of if their guard's too strong, just beat the crap out of their arms until they drop their guard. Yes, you can do that. And in the sense that would be making them make a mistake because you're causing them so much pain and fatigue that, they will inevitably make a mistake just on physiological grounds. Uh, you can do that, but that's not a thing that's available to everybody. That's not a thing that everybody is suited towards. And so learning how to lead people on a journey of, we do this and then we do this and we do this, and this is all very formulaic and this is all very expected. And, you know, I am telling you what your predictive model should be and then duck you, right? Uh, because that's exactly what we're looking for. We are, we need to be creating these circumstances. We need to be working towards this mastery of creating circumstances that people just don't see your attack coming. If your opponent is constantly evading your attacks and constantly countering your attacks and sliding in between your guard and hitting you with straight up offense, you're missing something here right? You're missing something in this realm. And, you know, it's maybe you're making, maybe you're just making rookie mistakes. Maybe they are good enough to make you make mistakes. Maybe they're doing things that you're just not trained enough for yet. And finally, maybe you're going up against a wizard. You know, that's rare, but maybe. So all I wanted to say was like, you know, we've talked about how to win before. But in order to win, you need to know how to successfully mount your tactics. You need to know how to create those little successes on the battlefield that lead to an overall victory. And that is creating threats that your opponent just doesn't see coming, or at the very least, doesn't have enough time to prepare defense for. All right, uh, I'm going to let this one go here, and I will talk to you guys later. Good journey. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, check us out on our other socials, and please head over to blacksunboxing.com to get a little more info, including how to contact us. Furthermore, if you are in the Phoenix area, please feel free to stop in, say hi, join in for a class, whatever. Also, if you ever see us cite sources um, or just for additional content, please check out our Substack. That is where we put all of the sources we use in our videos and is a major part of this. Plus it serves as a membership platform for long distance learning and for people who would like to support us but aren't local. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it if you signed up. Even just the free membership helps us out a lot. All right, I will see you guys in the next video. Good journey.